Hello everybody, uh, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent. In this short video clip I want to discuss with you the dissociation constant and the binding constant of an inhibitor. Now for an inhibitor let's have a look at how this works uh, on an enzyme. So we have an enzyme plus substrate, this gives an enzyme substrate complex and that gives an enzyme plus product. Now let's look at a competitive inhibitor. Competitive inhibitor is defined as an inhibitor that interacts exclusively with the uh, free enzyme. So with this guy here, that's the free enzyme. And we have a reversible reaction and this gives an enzyme inhibitor complex. Now, we know that this reaction is reversible, like here, and therefore we can write for a, a reaction. If we look at the dissociation of this inhibitor, we can write the dissociation constant equals the concentration of the enzyme times the concentration of the inhibitor divided by the concentration of the enzyme inhibitor complex, like that. Just this subscript C is to indicate that we are dealing with a competitive inhibitor. Now, what does this dissociation constant actually tell us? It tells us that if we get at the equilibrium, and these are all equilibrium concentrations, that in the equilibrium, when we have this reaction, uh, enzyme inhibitor reacts to enzyme plus inhibitor, once we've reached this equilibrium here, we get this dissociation constant, Kd. And Kd, dissociation constant, is small if the concentration of the enzyme inhibitor complex is large. So I just abbreviate that in this case. What does this actually mean? It means that in this case, we form lots and lots of enzyme inhibitor complex and we don't have a lot of free enzyme and inhibitor. So if Kd is actually small, then we have very tight binding of the inhibitor. So we can say if Kd is very small, there is tight binding tight binding of the inhibitor to the enzyme. And this means that the inhibitor binds very well and is a very strong inhibitor. So we can say the smaller the smaller KD the better the inhibitor. Now what is the unit of uh, Kd? Let's quickly go back. We'll rather write down. We said Kd equals enzyme concentration times inhibitor concentration divided by enzyme inhibitor complex 
the concentration. So we know that this is a concentration. We know this is a concentration. We know this is a concentration. And we cancel, can, can cancel out one concentration. So the unit for Kd in this case is equivalent to concentration. So usually a good inhibitor would work at the nanomolar to micromolar range. That is usually a good uh, inhibitor. Now we can define another uh, constant. We can say we had Kd equals enzyme times inhibitor divided by enzyme inhibitor. So that was our dissociation constant. We can also define a binding constant. And what would, this would uh, basically look at the reverse reaction. So for Kb, we would have enzyme inhibitor divided by enzyme times inhibitor in this case. So Kb is really nothing else but 1 over Kd. And uh, of course for a good inhibitor A good inhibitor would mean low Kd but very high Kb because it is simply 1 over in this relationship here. And from knowing either Kd or Kb I can very easily then calculate one of the other. I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.